everybody, it's Joey. I'm back again with another makeup look, this time for the Mexican holiday of Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead. A traditional Mexican holiday where um, there's a parade and celebration to honor one's ancestors uh, in hopes that they'll hear you and be near. And so I'll take you step by step uh, through this look and uh, show you how I achieved it. All right, so once again, for this look, my skin is clean and prepped, and um, in addition, my head has been shaved, because this look, as you saw, will go all the way back to the back of the head, uh, as if the skull mask encompassed the entire face and head. So uh, with this look, it's less um, like previous looks that I've done about looking human. It's more about a caricature or a very uh, stylized idea, um, particularly with uh, Dia de los Muertos, with the Day of the Dead. Uh, the masks and uh, the makeup for it is highly, highly stylized, and I would invite you to go online and explore some of the looks. Some of them are just absolutely incredible. So to begin the look today, I'm going to be working with <clears throat> a MAC Chroma Cake in uh, Clear Sky Blue with a stippling brush, and uh, chroma cakes are a product that you actually use wet. So I've dipped the um, stippling brush in water and just run it across um, the makeup, and the more you run it, the thicker the paste gets. So if you want a light wash of color, more water is better. If you want opaque coverage, less water. Do know that these do dry down, and they dry down to a really nice water-resistant finish. <clears throat> it's important to know. Uh, also, they are water-soluble, so if you do have a tendency to sweat, like I do, uh, especially <laughs> I'm sweating now on my upper lip, <clears throat> they have, have a tendency to separate, and we'll take some steps to, uh, to alleviate that later. So I'm just going to begin by uh, buffing the product onto the skin, and you can see with this uh, particular application technique, it goes really, really fast. And the good thing about that is because it is a water-based product or water-activated, you want to work quickly because as it dries, if you go over it again, it'll begin to chunk, kind of chunk apart almost. And so um, you can even see that it's a little streaky, and that's okay because we'll buff the texture out as we go along. So the same thing um, with the head will actually just work in buffing motions all the way to um, the back of my skull. Um, and what you'll I'll do is I'll actually use uh, my trusty hand mirror with the mirror that I have um, in order to look behind myself and actually complete the look on the back of the head. Uh, this is the first time that I've ever tried anything like this, so it should be an interesting experiment. And so we'll come back to uh, together and see what it looks like once I have the entire head completed. All right, and so now you can see we have the entire head covered in turquoise. Uh, there are some spots that aren't completely covered, and that's okay, because the next step in the process is to actually take a little bit of Makeup Forever flash color in number zero, which is a uh, turquoise color, and I've warmed it up on the back of my hand. I'm going to use my stippling brush that's been cleaned and dried off in order to sort of now lightly buff it over this product that has now dried. And what it'll do is sort of fill in all those little cracks and crevices where the product didn't go on completely and totally evenly, and then you can powder it all together. What's great about this is it also gives you a really long wearing effect. So I'll just take the stippling brush, and you'll see that I'll actually take it and move the product to a bare place in my hand. I don't want the brush saturated with the product. I just want enough on there to sort of just lightly and sort of stipple over top of it. If you wipe, you'll actually take away the, the product that you applied before. So you just want to kind of like lightly bounce this over top. And when you see color stop paying off, just, you know, re-dip a little bit and put a little bit more on. This is going to have kind of a textured appearance, which is something that I wanted. It's going to look a lot like, um, like ceramic, like one of the ceramic masks. And so um, a little texture in the skin is totally okay. Because again, this is kind of an homage, if you will, to um, the Mexican death masks. All right, and there you can see we're starting to get a beautiful, smooth color, uh, color payoff, and then we'll powder it. As with any look, powdering is key, especially if you want the makeup to set and to be able to work over it and blend things over top of it without um, them sticking or skipping or giving you an uneven blend. So again, I'm going to rely on my MAC translucent invisible set powder and again I'm going to just uh, take the actual container and lightly tap the powder out over my face so that I get a good even coverage of product 
And again, I don't want the, uh, the sticky grease paint to be stuck in the fibers of my brush. So I'm going to use my uh, MAC 150 powder brush as soon as I have tapped out enough powder all over the face to really set this look. So again, completely covered in powder, and that is okay, because then you can lightly sweep it and it'll settle into the places where it needs to go. You'll notice I didn't um, bother covering my brows or even um, putting makeup really completely around the eye area because the eyes will be blacked out. There's no need to over layer a product, so if it's not necessary to put it there, I'm a big believer in don't. The fewer layers of product that you have will mean, you know, your, your makeup will wear better. Your color payoff will also be more saturated because there's not layers underneath diluting the product, which is um, a, a mistake that makeup artists make early on, particularly with water-activated um, ingredients. So if I were to um, go over this with a wet black and I had really covered these areas, it would pick the turquoise back up and essentially dilute the black and I'd have to work a lot harder to get a true, honest, deep black. All right, clean, perfect turquoise complexion. The next step, I'm, I want to go in and highlight um, and give a lot of contour because this is a skull look. So I'll be contouring with some deep uh, <clears throat> shadows and turquoise and sort of an indigo color, but I want to also highlight using a little bit of MAC white airbrush pigment with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue to give me a really fair turquoise color. And so I'm just going to do that really lightly over the tops of the cheekbones to give them a strong highlight and strong definition. And you can see there that it starts to cut away and, and become a really strong highlight. I'm also going to do it um, on the top of the brow bone and across the forehead. So you can see that, that highlight beginning to, to, to arrive. And if you can't really plan out where your highlight's going to go, you can, you know, choose to contour first and highlight later. It, the, there's nothing that says that you have to do them in any particular order. I just find that if I highlight first, my contour seems to uh, be a little bit more uh, intense or more obvious. So uh, I'm going to continue to highlight with the, with the white mixture, um, and then we'll begin to contour the look. 